and Amina was just sitting there, observing the dissonance going on in my head. I felt like a spectator to my own thoughts. And well, it, it's not the worst thing in the world now, it's just another thing that I can look back on and think about how stupid I was. But the lack of clarity and balance, I guess, going on up there, even now, it just makes me feel, I don't know, trapped. Forever chained to the easiest and most boring outcome. Have you ever felt that before? What's a good idea? Oh. Oh, you guys just get me. I'm uncomfortable. What is up, gamers? It's your favorite high school level script writing YouTube video gaming enthusiast analyst Polydemo here coming b -b 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 back at you again with a game where the cast goes on vacation. I didn't know that that's how this game started and I came into a blind, but fuck it, it's summer. This part doesn't make any sense. I originally started writing this script in May of 2021. So there are some creative decisions in the writing that I'm not really gonna agree with. So um, this will be fun. So come in. Take your shoes off, and let's watch all our new friends get abducted. I'm getting ahead of myself here, sorry. I suppose it would do us well to talk about some of the new characters in this game before watching them get reduced to plot devices. So first up, we have Harmony, the oldest of the half-genies who wants to make a difference in the world with her powers. Next is Zapple, who uses electric powers and seems sort of judgmental towards Shantae. Then Vera, a half-genie from a hidden town here on the island, the zombie half-genie named fill in the blank, and Predator Bait the character. The mayor of Arena Town summoned all the half-genies here to, in his words, demonstrate his appreciation for rare and magical beings and to help people better understand them. And I'm sure whoever kidnapped them will have a better understanding of them once they've dissected them in whatever half-genie research lab they've cooked up. Now that all the half-genies other than Shantae have suddenly disappeared, she sees no other option than to go looking for them herself. We make our way over to the island east section of the map and quickly run into Risky Boots, who is also on Paradise Island. Yeah, I, I, lo I love Risky's design. <laughs> I would gush about it now, but it's still so early in the video and I don't want to blow my lo long sticks of dynamite. Those are some long sticks of dynamite, Risky. Please stop. This is an incredibly large safety hazard you're putting your little tinker bats in and I don't think pirates get workers comp. It won't be long before absolute power belongs to me. <laughs> That's gonna hurt if you jump. <laughs> Falling down into the passageway brings us to the service area of the sunken city that Arena Town was built on top of, where we run into Uncle Mimic and he gives us a quick history lesson on the city. He says that removing even a single stone block is enough to cause the whole place to collapse. Thankfully, we just end up in an extended part of the sunken city instead of having the entirety of Arena Town crash down on us, and while trying to find a way out, stumble upon a place called the Water Lily's Den, where we run into Risky again. Shantae confronts her about our whole half-genie disappearing act situation, where she doesn't outright deny being the cause of it, but knows that she's not going to be convincing Shantae otherwise, so we have a classic hair versus gun fight. Gun wins. Once she's defeated, she flees and reveals a path leading to our first refugee, Plank. Instead of freaking out and being like, Whoa, where am I? Oh, where did the others go? How long have I been underground for? I'm feeling all of the effects of vitamin D deficiency. Oh. All of the effects. She hands over this coin that allows Shantae to turn into a dash newt and just stays in her cage. Hey, Plank, what's your relationship like with your captor? Aww, look how cute this transformation is. Aww. <laughs> Whipping around a few bats and crabs riddled in the den, we find a big old door that's just frothing at the seams to be opened. And when we do, we encounter Water Lily Siren. This fight is simple enough. By pressing these buttons on the walls, we can move our opponent underneath these spots where the sun shines through them. Stop. Let's have a look at our map. We are right here and all this space in the surface area, and the ocean is between us and the surface. But pop off, gal pal, get those rays! Too many rays! Too many rays! Heading back outside with Plink has her suggesting that we combine our magic together to make saving the other half genies easier. We can do this by finding a fusion stone. Hey, sorry, do you have a sec? Uh, uh. 
that's the... Well, uh, sorry! Hey, this deep sea explorer here is looking for some arthropod life forms. Oh, hi, sleepy man. Thank you for being a blunt, one-off NPC that serves a concise and helpful purpose later. Oh, hi, Bolo. Thank you for coming on this vacation you were invited to for free and complaining the whole time. See you in Shantae 6, okay? Bye! Giving the fusion stone to Plink, we combine our magic and unlock a new ability called the Seer Dance, which allows us to see things hidden in the environment. We use this to gain access to Tree Town and talk to... Well, well, we don't really talk to him. He just kind of talks at Shantae without ever letting her get a word in. I guess a game with a predominantly female cast isn't exempt from the shackles of the patriarchy. So the sequence of events here is one, get the town chief to sob to us about how his half-genie daughter is gone forever. Two, play a dancing minigame. Three, talk to the chief again, where the woman that was running the dancing minigame comes in and says, Yo, that girl's got some boobs! To which the chief responds, Yo, you got some moves. Maybe my daughter isn't dead. And then gives us what is listed as a useless object, which is actually a key to a hatch just a little east of here. But let's backpedal for a minute, sir, because you expressed gratitude for receiving hope that your daughter might be alive by giving us what amounts to a handful of stuff from that, yeah, I'll get to it later, closet in your apartment. Regardless, we take the key and enter through the hatch, which leads to a mossy area, follow the path, same shit as last time, and continue on to the coral mines. We run into Risky again here. Are you sensing a theme? She confirms that she wasn't the one responsible for kidnapping the other half-genies, and the real threats on this island are what she refers to as the Sirens. There are seven of them, that's the name of the game! Five that rule over domains like the Water Lilies, and now probably this one too, and two others that sound to be a little more mysterious. We kick Risky Boots right in her safe jacket- fuck me. And find another one of our half-genie friends, Vera. She hands over a fusion coin similar to the one that Plink gave us, and also just stays in her cage. Is this leading up to something, or am I just reading too far into it? Here's a little uh, behind the scenes for you. It doesn't lead to anything. I think I was trying to set something up, and I completely forgot. It was never going to be funny. Let's just move on. The coin she gives us has the mark of the gastro drill on it, which makes digging through dirt patches easier than flexing your foot. Oh my, I was trying to make a gastronomious joke. That is so dumb. Using this transformation, we're able to make our way to the end of the coral mines to find Coral Siren. I can't remember the last time a boss fight had me this unengaged and left me with such a bad taste in my mouth, so I'm just not gonna talk about it. I'm sure you know where this is going. We reconvene with Vera outside and she says, who <laughs> boy, if only I had my lucky amulet. <laughs> I could help you. Uh, hello? Where are you headed? Get over here! <laughs> oh, hello, Mr. Scientist Man. You need some dead mermaid seashells for your research? <laughs> Don't worry. We here at Shantae's multi-purpose unorthodox toys specialize in all things of the sort. No need to feel insecure about those kinks. At our stores, you can express your comings and comings loud and proud without having to pay an arm and a leg for an arm or a leg. Not the type of payment we normally accept, but for now it'll do. Thank you for your patronage. We take the amulet over to Vera, who confirms that it's actually just a fusion stone, and we use it to combine our magic. Doing this gives us access to the refresh dance, which is used to grow little sprouts from the ground and sprout little growers from the seashore. I don't know. This is the metal fish, a submarine that the scientists we've been helping out are using to research the sunken city on the island, and it's sinking. It's sinking. It seems that there's something on the outside of our vessel ramming into us, so Scientist A, as I will be referring to her, says that we should electrify it from the outside to prevent it from causing us to go head over high water. I don't know how much I trust this. The ions flowing through the metal that this vessel is made of will cause some kind of alternating current that if it hits any of the variable capacitors laying around, they could shock us and kill us all nearly instantly. I lived with two electrical engineers for three years. Trust me, I know what I'm talking about. Please don't fact check that. Please don't fact check that. We should probably go out and see what it was that nearly sank us. Oh. It was just Squid Baron. Alright. Oh, <laughs> <laughs>
You ruined my moment, Squid Baron. You want to be a game dev? I get, I get it. I really do. But fuck, man, did you hear the heat you just interrupted? I, I really need you to understand. Dagrin balls. Never speak to me again. We advance onto the Cvent Lab. Hello, Risky. Oh, the treasure you've been looking to steal is the sunken city itself. That sounds great. Another half genie, Zapple. That's a fun name. Wonder how they came up with that one. Bonker Tortoise Fusion Coin. It can smash stone. I dig it. Let's corrupt the structural integrity of this island more perfectly. Like, why are we so quick to dismiss the idea that removing even a single block can make everything cave in when it's relevant? But the second we get a new power up, it's like. <laughs> I don't want to see the rule 34 for this one. The end of war, you look perfect for vor. Outside, we have an altercation with Zapple that, to summarize, basically has her suspicious of Shantae as she was the only one of the half genies who wasn't captured. So she's gonna go talk to Plank and Vera and then tells us to meet her in Armor Town before teleporting away. Worst part is, is that there's not really a fetch quest like the other times that explains why she just leaves without us and tells us to meet her there. She's kind of that bitch that hops in her car and says, <laughs> I would drive you over, but oh, my brother's pet crickets are taking up the seat, so, so uh, I'll just meet you over there, okay? Wait, go back? Enhance that? Yeah, it, it, enhance that? One more time? Middle finger? I knew it. She's the worst. We meet up with her in Armor Town, where she confirmed with Plank and Vera that they shared her abilities with Shantae, but probably felt obligated to do so. She doesn't feel that obligation, but says that if we bring her a fusion stone, she'll share her- That's exactly what they said too! What point are you trying to make? We're kind of left to our own devices at this point, so we continue to explore Arena Town and find this Studly fellow, Armor Baron, brother to our friend back home and new side piece to Sky. Sky, be careful. It, it looks like things are moving kind of fast. Fast. Dudes like this just want to lure you in and auction you off. Keep an eye out. Plus dudes built like a glizzy with shoulder pads and... I guess that's not a reason why you shouldn't trust him, but it's making me uneasy. As we continue to talk to Schneider's Baron, he says that if we bring him three ore chunks, he'll construct some special half genie armor and gives us a code book to give to the mayor of Arena Town that contains security codes for the sunken city's defenses that may be able to protect Arena Town against the sirens. We give it to the mayor and he takes the book so that he can prepare to evacuate everyone off the island so that no one is at risk of getting hurt by the sirens. What the hell is this doing laying on the ground? Oh no, we're doing the- Okay, l let me just explain why I keep doing this. I am very much still an amateur when it comes to all this stuff, and I'm constantly trying to learn things about animation so that I can get better at it and produce better shit for videos. But one thing that I haven't been able to get down for the life of me is walk cycles. I've tried it a few times now. You can see a, yeah, that's good enough attempt in the Minish Cap video, and this is my most recent attempt. Look at him go! So look, if I don't do walk cycles for a little while, now you know why, okay? Smooches. For now, I'm just gonna keep grabbing pieces of paper, throwing popsicle sticks on them, and calling it a day. Okay, we have context now. Bolo, stop right there, motherfucker! I can't believe that your instinct when you got your floor toast back was to eat it, but I'm not here to judge. Give me them nuts, boy! I don't remember there being any explicit guidance to go down here from the game, but hey, you sunken shipyard! Get a fusion stone from an old ghost lady with a little worm friend? Is the, is the little worm friend dead too? I want a little worm friend to take to the grave with me. Never mind, please no, please no, please no! Zapl and Shantae combine their magic, granting Shantae access to the spark dance. Editor Polydemo here, um... I think I misread what Zapple said in this part because I left a pause for her to be like, oh, I don't trust you, but she definitely says that she trusts Shantae. Uh, oops, sorry. We hand over all the ores found in the sand dunes to Armor Baron, who brings in two of his foragers to create sets of armor for Shantae and Sky that ultimately look more cool than functional. But hey, if they give us the upper hand on taking out the remaining sirens, I guess there's not much we can complain about. This is starting to play out like a very immoral fan fiction. Oh, <laughs> this is starting to play like every immoral fanfiction. So Squid Baron is just used as a vehicle to make fun of collectors who hoard figurines and things of that sort and plan to sell them off at a higher price. I get it, big guy. I, I tell myself my parents love me. We all lie to ourselves sometimes. Anyway, Squid Baron literally gets so heated talking about his game dev fantasies that he has to go light down. While he's out, this lobster girl frees Shantae and Sky before scurrying off. See, this is why it makes no sense to kill the lobster immediately before 
cooking, at the risk of it defiling your belongings, getting away, or just too high. On our way out of Squid Baron's chambers, we find this drool stained dog. Oh. I didn't realize we'd be doing this again, or really at all, and so soon. I, I wasn't really prepared for this one. You guys can keep going. I, I won't interrupt this time. So we head back to Armor Town to find that the jewel stained doll belongs to this girl, and... Wait. Let me look at that a little closer. Oh. Oh, oh it's not drool, is it? She hands over this Branson doll, which we give to this boy, and he gives us the manly doll. Ren, when we give this drool, this man, when we give us the merry doll. <laughs> <laughs> Once we get past old ghost mama, we end up in the sunken ship boiler, which she says that the siren that sank the ship is hanging out in. That's it. For real, I, I don't know what to tell you. Even Risky is fed up with our usual confrontation and just sort of oh -ho 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 her way off screen. We rescue Harmony and get the illustrious frog coin and fight another siren. Like, I, I, I don't know. What were you expecting? Like, did you want us to take pictures for your scrapbook along the way? Maybe a scrapbook of messages from the genie moms that doesn't get shown again until the very final scene of the game that never gets looked into or really explained? Something that our main character would surely want to get their hands on because they know nothing about their mother and has expressed interest in reading the scrapbook? I've met dogs less needy than you. Including this one. Aw, oh, you need a pair of gauntlets? No, oh, who's a good girl? Who's a good girl? Give me that collar, you little rascal. Oh, 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 oh. Wait, wait, the dog collar was actually genie clothing? You don't, you don't think, asterisk, some kind of joke will figure it out, asterisk, do you? Ghost Mama lets us know that Harmony made her way over to the mines just above here, so we meet up with her to learn our final fusion dance performed by Michelle Obama. <laughs> You're trying to get in on the presidential pension, too? So it turns out that the dog isn't a dog. It's actually a guardian genie that once a very long time ago sealed the seven sirens away in the vessel they arrived onto this island on deep below the surface. She was able to rob the seventh siren of her physical form before getting killed herself and now just sits at the bottom of the ocean waiting for someone to bring her these gauntlets, which aren't even actually gauntlets. Instead, they're meant to be hot glued together into this rod that once I get... Hey, hey! I know I was pretty aggressive with the others, but I promise I won't be- Ugh. They never learn. Editor Polydemo here again. Um, I don't like what I wrote here. It's stupid. I'll leave it on screen. I don't give a f read it if you want. It's fine. Um, the scientist just takes the not gauntlets, they're bracelets, um, and fills them with energy and we bring them to some computer thing. All right? All right. This causes a similar machine to pop up near Mimic and Shante tells him what we've learned about the island and Risky's plans. I'm gonna leave this in because I'm, I'm sure that when I go to edit this video and look over the footage, I'm gonna realize when it happened, but I literally cannot remember at all when it was brought up that fill in the blank was Roddy Tops in disguise and I couldn't be bothered to look through all What I'm saying right now is scripted, but whatever comes after this sentence is gonna be happening dur during editing. Editor Polydemo was an annoying crutch to lean on. I'm sorry, I know. This is the last time, okay? It was when we saved Harmony. Uh, Shante put the pieces together. We head down to the lowest point on the map where Sky, Bolo, and the scientists are all waiting to tell us that the island's core has been heating up ever since we activated those computer things and the fans aren't doing anything other than just actually peeing obnoxiously loud. If it heats up too much, the island explodes. Well, don't waste any more time, just give me a sign on where to go and I'll roll over there. I've got Madonna flowing through my fucking veins! You don't really want me to talk about another risky fight, do you? Look, Roddy Tops! She says that she was posing as a half-genie because Shantae didn't invite her to go on vacation, so she stowed away in Shantae's luggage and dressed like a genie to be included in all the fun stuff. Shantae didn't invite Roddy because she couldn't find her because she was already hiding in the luggage, which raises a few questions. One, how spontaneous was this trip that Shantae didn't have at least a few days to be like, hey, 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 Roddy, we're going on a trip, you wanna tag along? Two, Shantae never smelt the rotting flesh in her luggage the whole time they were traveling and thought, hmm, this stench is absolutely vile, allow me to investigate. Three, can anyone just rock up to this event in a genie outfit and say, yup, that's me, half genie Hugh Janus, and participate? You know what? The last one doesn't bother me that much. This shit is breezy. Roddy gives us the Jet Octo coin, which allows Shantae to turn into an octopus that can splurge ink midair, giving her two extra jumps. But at what cost, Shantae? You got ink all over Grandma's new rug. Why you know I love a nona? Ascending through the rest of the dungeon, we make our way to our fifth siren, Octo Siren. Truly the most thought-provoking siren in this game. This is Octo Siren, but so is this. Is this the mind? And this the body? What are these? Who is you? Are you your face? 
or just a collection of signals going off in your brain. Hey, this isn't really meant to be a wall, it's just kind of like a blank space. Oh, shit! Defeating the siren, we meet back up with Sky, Bolo, and Roddy outside. <laughs> Listen, Risky, I, I know how tempting it can be to press that button, but let's be honest with ourselves. I don't think you really know what's going on here. I, I don't think you understand the deep-rooted history of turmoil and hatred that fuels this island. And honestly, your plan seems kind of half-baked and narrow-minded in the first place, so let's just not press the button. <laughs> okay, well, this could have been worse. Risky, no! We're brought back up to Arena Town, and Shantae updates everyone on the state of affairs, and they start freaking out that if the ship is stolen, it would destroy the entire island while surfacing. During the discussion, the lobster girl from earlier joins in, where she's identified as the Sixth Siren, which has most acting hostile towards her. Even though she has trouble communicating, Shantae is able to understand that she wants to help, and absolutely nothing is done with that information. Well... Yet, but we'll get to that. Harmony sends us on our way to shut down the tower so that the ship isn't able to take off, which is surprisingly easy enough, and once we regroup with everyone, we find out that it didn't fucking matter. Risky has a cannon from the airship pointed at the island now, so I think we should be doing our best to make our way up there, and oh hey, Lobster Girl can make teleportation platforms! Wow, that was super helpful. Would have been more helpful for teleporting us around while we were on a time crunch deactivating the towers, but I get it, you just don't have your little notepad around, it's fine. With the teleportation platform, we're able to get inside the airship that Risky has stolen, which has us in one way or another using all the abilities that we have been given by the other half-genies to progress towards our final encounter with... The mayor? The mayor of Arena Town never existed, apparently. It's just been risky the whole time. She says that she found this island in its secrets years ago, which I really like what that implies. Like, Risky found this island in shambles, completely mayorless, and in order to fulfill this whole plan of hers, she walked around in a mask and peg legs for years, building up this community and helping it build a reputation for itself. It's quite noble of her, actually. And what's more noble is that she wasn't even gonna outright steal the ship. She made a deal with the Seventh Siren. Oh! Uh. Ew. They would exchange five drops of genie life force for the ship, which is why Risky posing as the mayor gathered Shantae and all the other half-genies here in the first place. But as a pirate, Risky, you should know that Nice guys, finish last, get your soul stolen, stinky! The Empress, Siren, fuses Risky's life force with her own and is at full power once again. We quake dance to break free from the cage and fight the Empress, Siren, which phase one of the fight acts nearly identically to the Risky fights in that we just have to keep chasing her around the room like a Karen chasing down the nearest minimum wage worker to complain about how damn expensive this Americano is. I hate myself for ever thinking that that was a quality line. Taking her out is really no problem. Problem, though, until she says that she'll be attacking at full power now, and after having made the screen fade to white, she takes on a new form. Okay, this is a certified mommy moment. <laughs> <laughs> that one was actually funny. The goal here is to break all of the orbs on pieces of armor connected to various parts of her body. And if you're like me and have an unnecessary commitment to the pike ball item, you're going to be hearing a lot of this. <laughs> God, I feel like my eardrums are being bounced around an air hockey table. We finish things off by smashing the orb on her forehead, which brings us down to the airship where she villain monologues. Yeah! How? How could you defeat me? I'll have you know I graduated top of my class at the Navy SEAL. The other half genies and Roddy are teleported in time for Shanta to give them all their magic back so that they can take their life forces back. And some of it goes to Roddy too, but she's a zombie, like a dead zombie. And they even bring this up as the reason why the Empress Siren wasn't able to hold on to it, but it's still. Ding dong, the witch is dead. Ding dong, the witch. Where's Shantae? Wait, how did you. No, you were, like, up there. Like, across the... Are you magic? We return to shore, and everyone starts with their... Oh, I'm so glad you're safe. Me too! Oh, and you had it so hard. Where did you get taken again? A cute cave with lots of natural light? 
Well, I, I didn't realize it was a competition. Well, I'm making you one, you fucking bitch. Listen, I, will I had not to sit in that, that cave and I felt like so bad the know whole that time. It was hey, Risky, me. welcome I back. Never... So Risky actually admits that she told the Empress Siren that Shantae was inferior to the other half-genies so that she would dismiss her, which is actually really sweet in a backhanded way, but she plays it off as if it was just a safety net in case what ended up happening actually happened. Risky gets taken off by a Tinkerbat to go find the ship that she stole, and the half-genies make plans to make up for the festival they never got to have. They don't show the festival. You don't get to see it. You have a big job ahead of you. Everyone here needs your help to rebuild, so always do your very best. That that wasn't edited at all. That was that was a real interaction that just came and went. Before our band of vacationers head home, Harmony gives Shantae the genie mom scrapbook. Pan camera three up, 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 up. Nice. What? Hey, hey, hey where am I? What is? What's going on? What's? What the fuck is this text? What is? Why am I? Uh, why are my hands up? I don't like this. What's going on? Someone, please help, please! Wait, Temi Chang helped with this game? That's, that's actually really cool.